Hey everyone, my name is Quincy Davis and thank you for tuning in. If you're new, thank you for checking out my channel and giving me a shot. Um, I think you're going to like what you see and what you hopefully will learn. Uh, therefore, consider subscribing. Definitely press the like button and leave comments, please. Okay, so I put out a little Instagram survey. Um, and if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do that. And in this case, I asked you what you wanted me to do next, what kind of lesson you, you wanted me to do. And by popular demand, I'm doing a brush lesson because many of you asked for a follow-up to my last lesson on brushes. So this is part two of, actually it's part three because I did a lesson a long time ago, maybe four or five, six years ago uh, on brushes, which is very thorough. Um, and I get into kind of the weeds of the, the history of the brushes. So you wanna check that out. Um, you wanna check out my previous lesson that I put out two or three weeks ago. Um, and then I'm doing one today as a result of many of you requesting it. So here you go, uh, part three of my jazz brush playing series of lessons. Hope you enjoy. So the first thing in this lesson I'm going to tell you is obvious to many, but not to all. You got to get some good brushes, okay? And uh, I love the Heritage, Vic Firth Heritage. Shout out to Vic Firth for making such a great jazz um, brush that is flexible, gets a great sound. The wires are a perfect size, not too thick, not too skinny. Um, so you want to check these out. Um, Heritage Vic Firth. Okay, and the handle also feels very comfortable. So the other thing is you want to make sure your brushes stay neat, right? Um, I think in my last video, I didn't, I was using some old brushes, um, but it really helps if you have brushes that are not all kind of bent um, and the wires are kind of all lined. Okay, so as you can see, these are nice and nice and pretty. <laughs> so make sure you have good uh, brushes that are in shape and not worn out. And when your brushes get worn out, you might want to consider getting some new brushes. Fast temples are a pain in the <laughs> but um, they can be really fun as long as you practice them every day, okay? Um, so I am partial to playing all three notes of the ride pattern in the right hand. Yes, it's harder and it requires you to to work at it and build up those muscles. But for me, um, it captures the excitement and the, um, I don't know, the, the intensity of the tempo. And, the, and it has a certain clarity that you can hear at the tempo. Um, so, and also I love the way Papa Joe Jones and Lewis Hayes, um, Ed Thickpin play these temples, Greg Hutchinson, Kenny Washington, um, and they all use the same technique. So I'm gonna demonstrate what that sounds like, what that looks like. Um, so here we go. One, two, uh, uh, uh. And you notice I'm not playing really big shapes. It's pretty tight. And what you'll notice is also in the left hand, I'm playing on the tips of the wire as opposed to which I, I'll demonstrate the difference. Um, for faster tempos, I like to keep it light, so I tend to play more on the tips. But sometimes I might dig in with my left hand as well. And again, the right hand is just playing uh, two and three, four and one, two and three, or walk the dog, walk the dog really fast. So let's try it again. One, two, uh, 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 uh. And you can also, if you get tired, you can just play chord notes or just break up the pattern. You see how I'm kind of breaking it up? Um, not only is it a, a kind of a, a relief for the hand, but it also is musical as long as you're, you're kind of phrasing it in a way that makes sense with, uh, you know, the, the, the groove and, and whatever is going on musically. 
I'm going to show you two other patterns uh, that you can use at up tempos that is also that are also very effective and sound really good. One, two, one, two. Uh, uh, uh. And you can see for this one, I'm, I'm moving in. I'm I'm playing clockwise with my left hand. You'll notice I go back and forth, okay? But for this one, I, again, I, I like to use my fingers for this. So therefore, I'm, I'm going clockwise, okay? And I'm just kind of pushing inward on beats two and four. And then my right hand is just a one, a three, a one, a three, a one, a three, a one. And I try to keep it nice and tight. It's not, it's not too big of a shape. Especially faster tempos, it's harder to keep that. So just make it nice and tight. Okay? And so this third one I never use, but some people really like this pattern. Um, so I'm going to show it to you. And all it is, it's kind of opposite of what we were just doing. Uh, the left hand is on beats two and four. One, two, uh, sorry, sorry. The left hand is on beats one and three. One, three, one, and it's kind of sweeping back and forth. So the other patterns, often you'll see me sweeping inward clockwise or sweeping outward counterclockwise, right? But this one is kind of just a back and forth on beats one and three. One, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three. And the right hand is playing two a uh, four a uh, two a uh, four a, uh. so it got sounds like this one two one two three four one two three four one two three four or one two three four one two three four one two, and then you can speed it up. Right, so. That pattern is cool, and if you can make that feel really good and swing, more power to you. And again, it's definitely easier <laughs> than the first pattern I showed you. It's This is all preference. Whatever you prefer, um, I say go for that. But make sure that you're not choosing one pattern or another as a crutch, okay? It's good to work on all of the patterns, even if you don't use them all, okay? There you go. Fast, up temples, have fun, practice every day. Okay, three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. So this pattern is so similar to what I do in four, four. But I'm just alternating where I'm putting the skip beat, right? And I'm playing a ride, a three, four ride pattern. One, two, a three, one, two. And that's it. And I might also sometimes go like this. I often I'll do this. One, two, three, 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 one, two. If it's slow enough, I might go. Right? Or I might just play sweets on four uh, on quarter notes. Those are two very common uh, patterns that I use uh, in three four that I think might be helpful to you. All right, so the two feel. The two feel is a really important feel to master and feel comfortable with because um, often, especially if you're playing a jazz standard, um, it precedes the portion of the, the time when you go into 4-4. So if you listen to trios like Oscar Peterson and Ahmad Jamal, um, often they'll start the songs out with this kind of a feel in two where the bass player is playing on beats one and three, okay? And then eventually they'll get into 4-4. Four, four. But um, for a two-feel with brushes, 
I'll just show you a, a couple, two or three patterns that I like to use um, that I find feel pretty good. So here we go. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you can hear, or you can see also, that my left hand is playing the skip beat. A one, a three, a one, a three, four, one, a three, four, a one, a three, right? And my right hand is simply playing quarter notes. And I try to connect all those quarter notes as much as I can. There's a slight lift in there. Left hand. You can go the other way if you want. But I find that going this way, I can engage my fingers a little easier. A little more natural. So together. bass drum of course should be mimicking what the bass is doing so you're playing feathering that on beats one and three okay so I'll, I'll move on to another pattern that I like to use here's another one one two a one two three four Okay, so this one, my left hand's going counterclockwise, and my right hand's playing the full ride pattern, right? And I'll isolate them. Ah. Okay, and then the left hand. Together. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. I lost my bass player, but that's okay. <laughs> one. And what I like about this one is that it's a really full sound. And it works great if you're playing slower as well. Because it really fills up the space nicely. Okay? So another pattern that I like to use um, kind of emphasizes beats two and four a little bit more. So um, I'll just play it and then and then we'll talk about it. Uh, one, two, three, four, one. And this one does not have the the ride symbol pattern. But you don't need it necessarily because it's kind of implied. And you can add it if you want. If you want. But usually I just kind of keep it out of the pattern. And I might put it in my bass drum more. Okay? And as you can see, I'm pressing down on beats two and four. Especially in my left hand, as I'll show you now. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Okay, so for this last two feel pattern I'm going to show you, it's one you've already seen. Um, I've talked about it, and I love it. I use it at every tempo that I can that you can think of uh, because it's just that useful. So all it is is ride pattern as taps in the right hand, quarter notes as sweeps in the left hand. Two, three. That was a rough, by the way. A 
left stroke rough. If you haven't seen my previous video on this, make sure you do that. Check that out. Okay? And you can hear my bass drum on beats one and three. All right? And you can add a little pizzazz <laughs> on the end of three. And depending on what you're going for, maybe you want a little lighter, but lighter sound. So you can lighten up the pressure in the left hand. You can make your right hand less pronounced. Oops. You know, I can play my right hand really strong. Play it quiet. There's so many things you can do with it, and it works at all tempos. Okay? So make sure you master that two feel as well. The ballad. Okay, so here we are. Often drummers are clueless as to what to do on a ballad, and the truth is that you don't have to do much except relax. Often, it's, that's the hardest thing to do. You, you just got done burning. You know, you played an awesome solo. How do I, now you got to play a ballad. And that's hard. It's hard to calm the, the, the kind of the, uh, the energy of what just happened. But it's very important that you're, you're calm, you relax, take a deep breath, and think slow. And think relax, uh, relaxing. Don't think okay, I have to play stuff. You don't have to do anything except enjoy the song, enjoy the melody. Let's say, um, dee -da, uh, Stella by Starlet. dee -da, do -da, -da, -da. do -da, do do -da, do 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 And you see how everything I'm playing is connected to the melody, whether um, it's a rhythm in the melody or it's a rhythm off the melody, right? In response to the rhythm of the melody. Um, or the I'm playing something to kind of lead us into uh, different sections. I'm trying to bring out the phrasing of the melody or, or the form. Um, I'm kind of communicating in a very passive yet supportive way with whatever's happening with the soloist or the vocalist or the rhythm section and that's it okay so um, it's easy to get really to, to feel like you had to be busy on a ballad but you do not all you have to provide is a nice pad of sweep sound that kind of fills up an auditorium or a room one two and you can play as light as you want maybe for a certain section of the song you play light right and you're playing more on the tips You play more on the tips of the wire. But then maybe for the bridge or for a soloist, you want more of a grittier sound. So be open to that. And whatever your pattern, sometimes I'll play going This is a pattern I use sometimes. And in this case, I'm emphasizing the beat, uh, the quarter note, a bit more with both hands. So now I'm back to the other pattern. Now I'm back to the other pattern. Okay, that's too fancy. I'm getting too fancy now. Slow down, Q. But whatever you do, think elegant. You got to be elegant. Um, you got to be delicate. Uh, you also want to be supportive and assertive. And you got to stay intense. But don't let the intensity affect your volume. Okay? When I say intensity, I'm talking about kind of you want, you want there to be kind of a fire inside that's burning but it's quiet. 
fire is quiet. Whoa. All right, so that concludes this lesson. Hey, let me know if you want me to do another brush lesson. I'm not sure if I have another brush lesson in me, but if there's something real specific you want me to try and explain uh, deeper, let me know in the comment section um, and I'll see what I can do. Otherwise, until the next time, practice your brushes. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, make sure you shed them just as much as you shed your, your sticks and keep swinging. Take care. Bye-bye.